This video is sponsored exclusively by AdjusterTVPlus.com. In this video, I interview Taylor Jones, Vice President of Resource Management, Compliance, and Licensing at Alacrity Solutions, which is formerly Worley, and we talk about a whole host of topics, including how you can get real construction training, what licenses she recommends you get if you want to work field or desk assignments, how to prepare for your second CAT deployment if you manage to survive your first one, and what she thinks the future will look like for us as claims professionals. And here's Taylor. So you've been on your first storm, Taylor, as a, as a new adjuster, and you're now you're home, you got released, and you got, a little, you got a little bit of money in your pocket. What's next? What happens now? Hey, Matt, thank you for having me on. I'm very excited to be here. So yeah, you just completed your first storm. You know, what do you do? Well, first I will say congratulations on completing your first storm. The first one's probably the worst one. That one's always a beating, right? You never really know what you're getting into. So um, but you, you've gotten out there, you've completed it. And now what? So a couple of things. One is I would say um, repetition, you know, practice makes perfect, right? So we really want to get you back on your next storm. So we really need to be working towards that on like getting redeployed and getting back out there. I think that's, that's probably your best recipe for success, right? It's kind of like speaking Spanish. If you're not using it, you're losing it, right? Um, the other thing I would say is training. And this is a point in time where you have to get real honest with yourself, right? Um, what did I struggle with on my assignment? Maybe your management and training staff were honest with you or candid with you about, about that. Maybe you made a relationship with your manager or trainer on site and you want to reach back out and ask them, you know, where, how you could be better. Um, you know, nothing makes me more excited than, uh, working with people who want to continuously learn and grow and really kind of master their craft. So for me, it would be again, you know, what do we have to train on? Was it construction training? Is it getting more licenses? Is it a, a software training? Um, and so those things you really want to deep dive in while you have a little bit of a lull and you're trying to get back out there. Um, and then once you're back out there again, it's that practice makes perfect. Let's just keep it going, but never be shy um, about admitting to yourself where you're lacking and where you need to be growing and then go out there and get that training. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Training is, I mean, it's, it's, it's continuous and with technology changes these days, I mean, it's, it's day after day, it's a new brand new thing. The old, the thing from yesterday is no longer relevant, you know? So before we, before we go any farther, um, let me, tell me about your, your role at Alacrity. Sure. Very excited to be with Alacrity Solutions. Um, so yes, my role is Vice President of Resource Management, meaning that I manage um, the team of people that manage those group of resources. So the people that we are deploying um, on site, um, those are the people that we kind of manage that network of people. So when adjusters are receiving phone calls from Alacrity Solutions, offering them a position, or maybe even just reaching out for a contact campaign, that is sort of under my span of control, as well as the compliance and licensing piece, which the licensing is obvious. You're gonna have some of my team members reaching out about um, um, maybe doing campaigns to get more licenses or maybe telling you, hey, your license is expiring in the next 30 days, may want to re-up it, looking at those things, as well as compliance items such as drug testing, background checks, contracts, those type of things. So all of that folds in under me and my leadership. Okay, terrific. Awesome. Um, specifically, you know, when we're talking about skills that an adjuster may need to work on, especially after, again, after going on their first, their first storm deployment where they get beat up a little bit, right? And you're going to kind of, the person's going to kind of feel out their boundaries on what they're, what, where they're really good and the places that they need to, to work on. I think that construction is a really, really big one. Xactimate, you know, and software, like estimating software training is, a, is another place. But for some reason, I don't know what it is about this a particular industry, but it's, it's really challenging to find good construction training or, or, or yeah, I guess construction training or to be able to build a knowledge base of construction um, as a, an adjuster doing like mostly restoration side stuff. So do you have any resources or tips or ideas for that? Sure. So, you know, it, it's going to be about getting a little bit creative. 
Um, you know, one, we do offer at Alacrity Solutions, we've partnered with um, Exactware, and they have these ILX construction modules that are really, really great. They really walk you through, you know, framing to finished out, just all the construction components. It's lengthy. Uh, don't quote me, but I want to say it's about 17 hours worth of content there, but it is really great. I mean, it breaks it down from the just the very bottom, the very basics, all the way to a built out structure. Structures. And so, um, again, modular base, which is nice because you can go in there and really focus on specific modules that are, are specific to what you need to learn. So maybe you're an expert when it comes to flooring, but not such when it comes to roofing. So you can really focus on those, those components. Um, you, once you have those modules, they're yours, right? So if, as long as you are, especially through the Alacrity system, as long as you are in the um, Alacrity, on the Alacrity roster and active, um, you will have those modules to use to your advantage. So um, if you're out, find yourself out on a storm, or on a roof somewhere and you're not quite sure, you can always access those modules when you're back at your hotel room or whatever it may be, but they're, they're really great. Um, and I highly recommend those modules. Um, the other thing is, is in Xactimate, the software, which, are, or which is the most heavily utilized. So I'll kind of talk about that today. You know, when you're looking in Xactimate, they do have op options in there. So an example is I learned Xactimate the same time I was learning construction, right? So I didn't kind of come into the industry with any construction knowledge or really any Xactimate knowledge. So when I was working within the program, if you go to, you know, the estimating items and you can look there, it really kind of walks you through the, the components of the home. And so you can click on the roof and it'll bring up the list of components for the, the roof, whether it's, you know, wood shingles or, or um, components composite shingles rather, um, the framing members, those types of things. And so different types of felt. And so I feel like that's a really great tool to utilize like while you're at the home or even when you are off your first storm and you're back at your home. Um, again, practice makes perfect, constantly utilizing that software to your advantage and to keep using it. Again, repetition is gonna be important here. So use that software, sketch your own home, um, you know, go in and do the repair process for pretend things in your home. So that's another way. And then just the third way I would say would be, um, you know, construction type stores, roofing stores, go and look at the, at the materials, learn what they are, learn the different thicknesses and things like that. That that's sort of another way to go. Or again, if you odds are you didn't survive your first storm without some sort of a mentor or someone to talk to, um, you know, is there someone that you can rely on? We are so connected as a society today with our our handy dandy phones right so if i am on a roof or i am you know out at a home and i don't i've never seen this before i don't particularly know what that is is there someone that you can message or text or your manager that you can send a picture to that they can help you out with that so you know it's just about remaining connected we're so connected these days whether it's a skype a zoom um your cell phone pictures things like that a facetime and then that we can you know, really kind of real time on site. But then when you're off a storm, you know, you can certainly do those construction modules, continue to work with an Xactimate and go to the estimating, um, you know, the estimate items and look at the different components of the home. And again, utilize your resources with your construction stores. It's not just preparing, you know, to be deployed or to, to handle claims. It's even while you're running claims, you can still, it's ongoing. I mean, especially the mentorship thing is, is huge. I mean, I, that, I underscore that a thousand times. Having people that you can say, hey, I don't know what this is, text them a picture, or even like on some Facebook groups, you know, there's, there's a handful of good ones. We've got a really good Facebook group. People will post up pictures of the thing and say, hey, what do I do with this? A swamp cooler on a roof. The roof needs to be replaced. What do I do? Right. And people will, will nicely and generously share information about, you know, what you should do. And then I'll jump in and say, no, you're all wrong. Do it this way. Right, Just kidding. Right, right. Well, you know, there's something to be said about that. Um, you know, the blind leading the blind sometimes, you know, if you don't know, then you don't know what someone's telling you is true or not. So, you know, I always want to say rely back on your, your leadership there on the storm that you're on, because that's For how sure. you get really good information, but you're absolutely right. Again, we are so connected um, as a society these days. So just use your resources. 
Okay, so you are a part of your title. It's part of your title. You're an executive and it's, it's licensing. So as a, as a person who is, say, never run claims before, um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm getting Xactimate training. I'm, I'm doing everything else that I need to do, but I don't know that much about licensing, how it works, which licenses I should get. Um, as a, as a person who is kind of like oversees this, you know, that part of Alacrity's business, what recommendations can you give directly to an independent adjuster who may be watching this about licensing? How much time do you got? You know, I could talk <laughs> for a very long time on licensing. Licensing's are, are, licensing is very important, right? I mean, in licensing states, can't touch a claim if you're not licensed in that state. So a few, a few items there. So one, you know, one of the questions you ask are what licenses should you get? If you're going to ask me that question, my answer is always going to be all of them, right? Um, every, every license you can get, I want you to have it. Now you're, the next thing you're going to say to me is, but Taylor, I don't just have all the money in the world to get these licenses. Correct. So what I would do if, it, you know, kind of starting out, understanding the importance of licensing, I would for sure, 100%, you have to get your home state license, right? If you're licensed, if you live in a licensing state, such as Texas, such as Florida, such as Louisiana, Georgia, you need to get your home state license. If you live in a state that is not a licensing state, such as Colorado, Nebraska, Tennessee, you will need to get a designated home state. And there are several states out there that allow you to designate as a home state, Texas being one of them, Indiana being another. So um, there's a few states out there, there's some research that you, know, you, can, you can do, you could also call Alacrity, we're happy to help you in that endeavor, but you will need to go through a licensing course and designate that state as your home state. So example, Texas, uh, you, could, you could go through the program, designate Texas as your home state, and you will be able to get some reciprocity benefits there. Um, so reciprocity means if I have a Texas license and say Louisiana is reciprocal with Texas, it's very easy for me to log onto a website, pay for the license and have that license in X amount of time, usually 48 hours, maybe sometimes longer. Obviously living in a state that is a licensing state is, is better for reciprocity, but we've certainly come a long way with those designated home states. Um, there are reci reciprocal, uh, you know, there's a lot of reciprocity there and it's getting better by, by the day. Um, so the other kind of component to that, if it were me, is I would get my designated home state and then I would go look at the list of states that my home state, so I live in Texas, my home state is Texas, I would go look at, at the list of, of states that are reciprocal to my state. Um, a list of states that I can get pretty quickly. Like I know within 48 hours or so, I'm able to receive that license in hand. And then I would look at the states that are not reciprocal, right? New York being one of them. Um, or states that are reciprocal, but you have to jump through an extra hoop. Maybe you have to submit fingerprints for or something like that. Maybe you have to appoint. I would look at those states and I would probably start focusing on those, right? New York license is an amazing license to have because it is a very difficult license to get. And what, what is that saying? Do today what no one will so you can do tomorrow what no one can right so i i very am a big proponent of getting that new york license it is we are you know it's a deficit through the industry more and more people are getting them but it is such an important license to get it's difficult so i would recommend that one especially in the off season but you know there's also something to be said this time of year um especially it, are looking at those hurricane prone states you know if you look texas the florida up to the carolinas um, there's something to be said about working on those as well. So again, uh, kind of going back to your original question, I'm going to tell you to get all the licenses. Um, that's going to cost you in the ballpark neighborhood of about $3,500, right? That's cheaper than a semester of college in a lot of places, right? So just kind of, if you're looking at that and sort of investing in yourself and building your career, I highly recommend that, especially um, if you're wanting to work in an in-office claims handling environment. Sure. Um, and then it's going to cost you about another 1700 ish dollars or so a year to maintain those licenses. 
But again, the more licenses you have, ideally, the more opportunities you have, uh, the more money that you can make to continue to keep these licenses up. So, you know, for me, again, go, I, I, do, I, I do run the licensing and compliance department, but also the resource management department, and those things really play, right? So if I'm looking at those requests from our, from our clients um, with specific licensing that they would like to have someone on site have, you know, that's up to resource manage it, management to ensure that they are selecting candidates who meet those criteria. So the more licenses you have all the way around, the better. The other thing I would say about that is when you do get in a seat, if you are looking to work in say, uh, an in-office claims handling environment, the more licenses you have, kind of the more lucrative you are, right? So the more of a benefit you can be to that operation because you can handle more, I, realistically speaking, you can handle more claims um, because you are, a, you are licensed in more states. So it's just also about making yourself marketable and investing in yourself. So I, you know, that's kind of my licensing spiel um, for better or for worse. Right on. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And it's, I mean, I can tell people, so if, if I'm telling somebody who's doing cat field only, I might say, well, you may or may not need to get your Wyoming license. I, you know, but especially these days and with, 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 with a lot of the technological changes and the way that, that things are kind of shifting a little bit. There's a lot more in office remote style stuff where, you know, if you live in Colorado, you may have run claims in New Hampshire and in Washington and in Texas and any, anywhere in the country. If they can give you the work to do, you're way more marketable and you're going to be way more, way more valuable to a company. If you have, like I said, all the license and that New York license, I mean, Everybody always says it's the, the golden ticket. The golden ticket, yeah. yeah. Even though on the field piece, though, you know, I'll kind of I'll kind of speak to that a little. Again, the more licenses you have, more opportunity, in my opinion, no matter what. Now, if you're the adjuster that says I'm only ever going to work Texas, don't ask me to leave Texas, um, then your opportunities are going to be in Texas, right? Yeah. Um, if you're the the field adjuster that says I'm going to get all the Gulf states and up to the Carolinas, you know, over the Atlantic for the hurricanes then you know then you have more opportunity right the other thing is um from a strategy perspective from resource management the the <laughs> who would say i'm going to get several licenses because i really want to be a resource um for alacrity are going to get more opportunities than the person who just says don't send me out of texas right because for someone to tell me that they are more willing to work anywhere that we want them to go versus the person who's a bit more particular, um, you know, we really want to ensure that these people are getting the opportunities because we understand what we have in front of us, right? Someone who would go to work and would travel. Certainly not to say that if you only want to work in Texas that you won't get any work. That's absolutely not what I'm saying, but just from a strategy perspective, um, the more licenses, again, you just put a smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think the same thing goes for not just licensing, but, if, but a, an adjuster who says, well, I only ever want to do cat. Or, you know, that's all I want to do for cat property. That's it. Don't ever, if there's some other thing comes up, I don't want to hear about it. Right. Um, I think that, yeah, <laughs> that limits, that definitely limits a person's, you know, I, I try to tell people to strive to become a claims professional instead of just a cat adjuster or an auto appraiser or this or that. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk a little bit real quick. Um, any suggestions or recommendations for getting licensed? I really think Adjuster Pro is a great company. I've worked with them for a lot of years and I think they just really do it well. Um, and then going back to the, again, the adjuster pro or getting your license, a lot of us just aren't born with the institutional knowledge, right? So it is something you need to study for. It is something you need to prepare for. Um, I couldn't just walk in. It, a lot, most of us couldn't just walk in and pass the test. So it's important that you, you know, you do take the studying very seriously. And adjuster pro, I think, does a really great job of being very succinct 
with the modules and the things that they're teaching to dial you into what you need to know for the test. So I highly recommend Adjuster Pro. Of course, I want you to do what is right within your budget. So Google it. Um, you know, maybe you say a classroom course is better for you than, a, than an online. There are certainly those available as well. Um, just do whatever is right for you and right within your budget and best for the way that you learn. Very cool. Okay, so now for say for example, so we were just talking about an adjuster who's been on the first storm and they, uh, you know, what steps should they take to be better prepared for their next one? What about if the person has never been on a storm before at all? Is there any other, I mean, all those things that I think go for the person who's been on a deployment will go for this person as well, but what can a person do to kind of prepare for like handling a high volume of claims and like the pressure and, you know, maybe the chaos as well? You know, that's going to be a lot of a personality type, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say everybody hacks it in this career. Um, it is a lot. It's a lot of pressure. It's a, it's just, you know, a lot of, a lot of environmental things as well come into play. Um, I will say the people who have never been on a storm um, and, you know, they're getting ready to head on the first one, they hold a very, very near and dear spot in my heart. I really love, love, love um, working with brand new talent. It's one of my favorite things. Um, I just without the new talent, you know, we just wouldn't survive as a company. So we do, we do love that new talent. So what I would say for that, again, is really no different than when you get off your storm. You may be a bit more prepared when you're off your storm because now you know what to expect and you also know where you maybe had some downfalls, right? But if you're a brand new adjuster, um, training, training, training. So we do offer courses here at Alacrity. We have um, development type courses. We have Xactimate training modules. We're all Xactimate affiliate trainers. Um, so we are, we are able to, you know, kind of not only are we affiliate trainers and we understand the software very well, but we are also able to speak to what our clients want when it comes to that software. So, you know, we have online courses, we have virtual courses, especially in the, in the environment in which we are in now with COVID, but we also have in-person training. Um, so I would look for right now, what I would say is if you are looking to get into the industry, this is the time. Right. We have had a historically active hurricane, just storm seasons as as it is. Um, not only that, but we have we have the fires, those types of things. So if you are interested in getting into the business, now's the time. Log on to alacritysolutions.com, submit your application there, and we are certainly happy to get you, you know, get you started. We also offer virtual client certifications. Some of our clients do. Um, require certifications, especially our largest client. Um, and so we are able to get you through those certifications virtually, again, due to the environment. We're able to do that. So if you log on to alacritysolutions.com, you can submit your application. And if you haven't, or if you haven't already, and if you have, navigate over to the Alacrity Academy and get the, that client certification. And we're happy to uh, get you going from there. Um, you know, right now we are currently deploying. Don't know what what that will look like when this airs, but we are. Um, you know this is the season, right? So no time like the present, jump into it, jump in with both feet. We've got incredible management, incredible trainers out there that are going to you know, help you along the way. So now's the time. If you decide to wait, um, you know, you're not ready to jump into it just yet. No problem there. Again, we do offer a lot of training courses. We are going to be within the next month or so heading into our slow season. And that is no better time to start preparing for a storm season than in, in the slow season. So again, get your certifications and get training. Um, be watching in the coming months for us to post some, some um, content and some training classes to our schedule. Very cool. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And so just kind of a quick follow up to that. Um, is it possible for a new adjuster, somebody who's never handled claims before to do daily work locally? Is it possible? Yes. Is it ideal? No. And there are not going to be a lot of opportunities there. Now, um, that's with Alacrity. I'm going to speak for Alacrity there. And, and, I'll, and I'll, some backstory there is that 
Daily claims are again daily. There's not a lot of repetition. You you can see a lot of you you know you could be working on a kitchen fire today. You could be working on an air conditioning leak tomorrow. So there's not a lot of repetition, and it's really sort of difficult to get your sea legs under you as a new adjuster. Um, so what we do is we do like to see you get out your first your first storm beyond sort of a catastrophe kind of high volume but very repetitive so you know you're going to go out and see wind damage roof today you're going to see a wind damage roof tomorrow right so that really prepares you to get your sea legs under you in your flow um you know one of the things that is very important to you know as for a successful adjuster and i think that you would you would echo this is the right your right flow right your repetition so you don't forget things you know if you start on the left side of the house every time you're going to be less likely to miss something than if you jump around the house right i think you yeah. would i think you and i share that same sentiment because Absolutely. you were a successful adjuster and so repetition is really going to be your best friend when it comes to learning this this career and so you know, I, I don't want to certainly don't want to discourage anyone on the daily the daily space, but I just think that it's those those opportunities are a bit um, they're not as abundant, and also because a, a lot of times clients on those types of events, so the daily space, a lot of the clients will specify you know someone needs to have two years experience or three years experience, or they need to have experience working in the 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 daily space so and a lot of times that's just not an alacrity um you know situation it's it comes down from our clients you know we do have to provide our clients the talent in which they ask for so that being said um you know i i would say that your best opportunity as a new adjuster would be in in the cat space up front yeah yeah it makes sense like you said um the big thing about a cat is that you're learning the process, right? The claims are all pretty much the same. You're going to get 50, 40, 50, 60, you know, fence blown down claims or shingle off a of roof, wind claims. They're, they're pretty simple or hail claims, yep. roof, gut, roof, you know, fascia gutters, sidings, window wraps, right? Over and over and over again. But you're learning the process of, you know, if you do have to set reserves, how do I navigate this, this particular carrier's, you know, proprietary claims management system? You know, what do I do? How do I close the claim? What's a claim summary? What's, you know, how do I document my, the loss, right? Doing it in a high volume thing. I mean, it's, it's super duper stressful. That's why first storms are usually it's, it is absolutely sink or swim, but the person gets to see they start to like there's a point where somebody turns a corner right and they kind of start to see the they see the matrix right so they it suddenly right. all makes sense and then they're just off to the races and it's, right. they either do that or they don't do that right? correct yep so anything that you want to add as far as um what alacrity what alacrity is doing how alacrity is responding to to the current pandemic thing COVID? Yeah, you know, we, well, as far as the pandemic goes, you know, we've, we we're it's difficult because we're trying to find a balance, right? We are, we need to service our clients, but we also need to pr protect our, you know, our, our value, which is, you know, the, the resource network, right? And so we are trying to do a lot of things, more things virtually. We have had to cancel some trainings, um, but we have started offering more virtually. And again, our largest client certification is now being offered virtually. And so, you know, also when we're on the storm site, we are offering a lot of PPE equipment. We are offering masks, hand sanitizers, um, checking the temperature in a lot of locations as well. We are also, um, you know, providing guidelines of what to do if you get out to a home and you no longer feel safe or you feel like someone may be ill, you know, how to respond to that. So we are just doing our best to navigate these waters, these just these new waters in which we are all just trying to have to figure out together. Um, but that's, you know, that's sort of our response for now. Um, and we just we, we are going to continue to listen to the guidelines that are, you know, set by the the who and um, and just try to uh, just try to navigate it right. Um, it, yeah. I don't know that anybody has a perfect answer. Um, and then of course, for however long this goes, we are willing to adjust to it and see what I did there. And, uh, and <laughs> nice you know, work, nice work. Virtual trainings, yeah, more virtual or online self-paced type training. Okay, 
Great. Okay. So in light of all of that, um, what sorts of uh, opportunities are there at Alacrity for say virtual adjusting or photo inspections? Sure. So that is something that we are really kicking off hot and heavy. You know, we are piloting some things. We're already working with a couple of clients in, in that space. Um, you know, we're sort of defining what that means though. It's, it's very new within the industry or at least in the last year, year and a half-ish. And so COVID sort of sped that, that process up. So we do have a couple of clients that do photo only, scope only type work. And we also have made some strategic hires here at Alacrity to kind of propel us ahead in that. So we do look for that to be, you know, something of the future. And we do think that there, you know, that there is a, an area in our space for that. And uh, we certainly hope to capitalize on it. Awesome. So speaking of which, that kind of dovetails into my last question here. Um, what does the future look like for the independent claims professional? Oh, coming at me with the, uh, the hard stuff, huh? <laughs> yeah. So a couple of uh, ways that I would answer that are, you know, I don't know that there are many careers that are as static as adjusting has been for, you know, 30 years there hasn't been just a whole lot of shakeup or a lot of change, right? It's just, it's, it's primarily just been adjusting and doing the same thing. Now, yes, we have had some changes here and there or different client requirements, those types of things. But I would say just in the, the you know, the last couple of years have things started to sort of shift. And, you know, I'm a really firm believer that we, we do, you know, need a fresh approach to how claims are being handled. Um, I think that we are due for a shakeup. And so, you know, one of the things that really attracted me to Alacrity, um, which is just that I feel like Alacrity, first of all, has a lot of really great leaders, leaders who have been in this industry for a very long time and have sort of grown with it. We've also made a lot of really strategic acquisitions, which I think are going to, you know, help protect us in this time of sort of uncertainty, but also, you know, um, allow us to place it strategy, put strategies in place for us to prepare for the future. Um, you know, there's a lot of new technology that is coming out, which, uh, you know, I embrace and I know Alacrity um, embraces as well. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to the future. I know that whatever it is, we will certainly adjust, but I also think that the, the people who will, will survive any changes like, like always are those that are able to adapt and sort of embrace change and, uh, and, and, you know, get on board and, uh, you know, just look towards the future, you know, from that's sort of from an alacrity standpoint, I, I truly believe that, you know, alacrity is really set up for success going forward into our future. Um, but as an industry as a whole, um, you know, I, I would say that I think COVID has really pushed some of the limits. Um, as to what we could do, right, as an industry. And I, I've seen some clients do things that, or deem acceptable things that I don't know that they would have otherwise, meaning scope only or, you know, virtual estimating and things like that. So I do think that we've been pushed um, in that direction a bit earlier than maybe we would have. But again, I am so I, I am a firm believer that again, we, you know, are due for a fresh approach to how claims are being handled. And um, I think that, you know, the future is bright, no matter, no matter, you know. With that being said, where can people find more information about Alacrity Solutions? So you can go to alacritysolutions.com. We have a pretty robust website. Um, and then you can always pick up the phone and give us a call. Our resource management team certainly loves to hear from each and every one of you. Um, and if we don't hear from you, you'll certainly be hearing from us, um, you know, it, it shortly. Um, happy to have you on board if you're a new adjuster or if you're a veteran adjuster, we have a spot for you here at Alacrity. So please do come on board. Um, again, alacritysolutions.com. You can submit your, your uh, application there. And if you're already on our roster, pick up the phone, give us a call. We'd be happy to hear from you. Terrific. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy uh, being on your show. So I just, this is, a, this is a new one that we were able to do a Zoom call instead of face-to-face -face like we did last time. But 
either way, I certainly love being on your on your show. So happy to partnership with you. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date, and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims. A career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.